This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. to everybody thank you so much for joining us once again on our sunrise safari what a beautiful sunrise we do have here at the juma private game reserve in the sobby sand south africa good morning everybody my name is cedric and behind the camera with me on wendy is no other than muscles and paw so yes thanks for joining us what a beautiful morning we have here i'm sitting on the western side of juma on zoe's road i love this spot because it is you're quite elevated here so you can really look down into the valley and you actually can see this beautiful sun that's uh, coming up this morning so i think this is going to be a marvelous marvelous day a little bit of cloud there on top but nothing really substantial other than that i think for the morning just watching the sun come up i'm thinking about my plan of action um, I think I might be heading down to the southwestern corner of Juma to see if we can follow up on a Shudulu. But yes, joining us this morning on the drive, of course, on Rusty, we've got a Tristan and a Rihan. Up there in Pridelands, we're going to have Rexon and BK. And all the way in the northwest in Madikwe, James and Johan. But as you can see, this is a live and interactive show. So if you've got any comments or questions or even a suggestion and you're watching on the Wild Earth app or website, please make sure that you do register. It is very, very simple. And then you can send those questions and comments through to us. And Marie, I think we all can't wait. I think yesterday morning sunrise safari was so exciting. Action, action packed. Had those lions, of course, Gab had the uh, Tlalumba um, on Juma. So, yes, yesterday morning was action packed. So, let's see what happens this morning. Maybe we're going to get some more amazing sightings. I'm hoping for Shudulu and Cub. That is really a leopardess that I want to see, especially with a cub, because we haven't seen the cub yet. So, it'll be very nice to get to see the two of them so that's why my plan of action is to head to the southwestern corner of Juma but for now I'm just sitting here just enjoying this stunning view as you can see it's a beautiful morning here I think today is going to get about 30 31 degrees Celsius if I'm not if I'm not mistaken which is quite a nice day for a winter's day eh? nice temperature I know Tristan is going to try and follow up on uh, Mawati to see if he's still going to be around that kill site yesterday, from yesterday. I just love listening to the, the birds chirping away, all the choruses going. Oh, the morning chorus is always stunning. I love it. Franklins and Spurfells. But as you can see, this beautiful sun still coming up. But uh, talking about the sun, let's go and take a look at the weather all over today. Good morning, good morning everyone and welcome in a beautiful, beautiful sunrise. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a very hot day today here at Pradland from myself, Rexon and BK behind the camera. We are looking for a great morning show underneath this beautiful, beautiful 
uh, sunrise. It could be a lot of things that are starting to move now as the sun are rising perfectly from the east. That you know that in most cases that tells all different kind of species to have an energy to move in sort of a different area for grazing and also for hunting. Of course, even going uh, to the water source. Uh, light is more important. Remember, all these um, antelope, uh, if it's still dark in the morning, they cannot move. But once it's sunrise, they can able to see anything that might be really moving around in the area. We are really impressed with how it looks. It might be really uh, clearing uh, early, I mean, later on in a very good uh, shape of a light. It's more like golden. That tells us it could be windy today in the course of uh, morning, later on, and clears around in the area. It's still a little bit chilly here, but of course, it will be a hot day. We believe that um, we'll start uh, our, our drives looking around Impala Plain. Yesterday, there was a report of wild dogs that are moving uh, north of our property, more towards uh, Impala Plains on that area towards HQ. We have to go and check around what might be in the surrounding. And also, in the same area, there's a hyena den. You never know what might be. At yet, we don't... Danny, thanks for joining us. This is your favorite part of the morning. Still everything, yes, even yourself, very fresh. We have to follow everything fresh in the morning. Tracks that you can see, it leads to success. I love morning drive also because everything that you can read on the ground, you know that uh, it's been active at night or early part of the morning. It's good to follow up on that. Let's see if we can find something around um, the uh, Impala Plains, but uh, let's enjoy this beautiful sign. Don't go anywhere. Uh, we'll, after this, we'll head straight to the east and look for wild dogs. Also, Jane is really commenting about the beautiful uh, picture of the sunrise. It, she is beautiful. Uh, we really loved this. We decided, myself and BK, when we drive here, we saw the beautiful uh, yoke like of uh, a sunrise, which is really amazing. And we really take that opportunity that we can share with the world how Africa looks like, especially in Prideland, every time the sunrise is perfect and beautiful. Of course, from sunrise, let's take you to Juma and join Tristan and able to say good morning to the world. Well, it is a very good morning, actually. It's a beautiful start to the day. The sun is about to come up, which is nice. It's given way to those, well, the clouds have given way to the sun. So hopefully it will be a good one. Anyway, my on camera I've got Rian this morning and hopefully it's going to be a good day. We're just busy following up on uh, where Mulawati was. I went to the kill, no kill there um, anymore and there was a very 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 big poo next to the road so I suspect that he's left but I can't find any tracks going anywhere. I just had a whole bunch of birds sort of alarm calling and making a bit of noise so I just wanted to check down Ingwe Alley a little bit just to see if he hasn't popped out somewhere here. Um, I haven't found any tracks for him, for him leaving that area, so I don't know if he just went to the toilet and then went back down and the kill is down on the ground at the moment. It's possible. Um, there was a lot of hyena movement close to quarantine, but not actually at that area. So maybe he just saw them and he took it down and is just feeding on it down below. So I just want to quickly check this little wallow here. I don't know if it's got water. I haven't been here for a while. Um, <clears throat> check if there isn't any sign of him coming this way and then we'll turn back and go to where the kill was and just drop into the drainage and see if he's not just sneakily sitting there somewhere still um, chewing on the last remains of that 
I would be surprised if he's still there. There wasn't a lot. Cindy D, good morning to everyone. Well, good morning to you too. Um, hopefully everyone is having a good morning so far. Um, or evening, wherever you may be. Some of you are not in our time zone. Uh, what birds of prey are sitting here? There's a whole bunch of, I'm sure, vultures sitting in the tree. There's nothing at this wallow either. I just want to quickly check which birds we've got. And there's definitely a white back vulture on the right. Bateliers. So two bateliers on the left, white back vulture on the right, and a hooded vulture in the middle. Now, those typically indicate a dead animal when you get that combination together. Um, hmm, that would be quite surprising given where we are. But we'll go check it out. Like I say, those um, particular sort of combinations of birds normally indicate kill. There is that dead hippo that's at Chitwa, and it's not far for birds to fly from there. But I wouldn't expect this sort of um, combination of birds to be together unless there was something around. So I think let's go and investigate there. There's not a huge amount of vultures. I was just trying to check if any of the other trees have got, um, which I don't see. Hmm. All right, let's go see if we can s find out why they're all here and if there is anything around. Not everyone gets excited to hear a leopard chuff, spot a pangolin, or see a real impala rut. But if you are wild about the wild, you can become part of a community of like-minded nature lovers and share authentic wildlife experiences with the world. Join the Explorers Club and you will also enjoy the many benefits that come with it too. Wild with Explorers, it's in your nature. going to check from here. I'm just wanting to scan these open areas a little bit. I I saw something at the bottom of that mound but it's just a lump of grass. Sky Doogie saying hopefully Cedric and I are able to find us some spotty cats. Let's hope so. It'd be nice if we do. Um, we're gonna try and see if we can find one of them, whether it be Klalamba and Sumi, Maribs, Mulawati, 
Shidulu Cup. Hopefully one of them makes an appearance. I know Mzemba was seen on Simambili, so hopefully he comes across. That'll be cool if he pops his his face in on Juma. So that's kind of one of the cats which we would look for too. I'd be very excited to see him. I haven't seen him since I was very little. Um, and it was still just a, a nugget being raised by mom. Uh, so it'd be good to catch up with him. In fact, it was with Sky Doogie that I actually saw that little leopard the first time. Anyway, all right, nothing that I can find here, no tracks. So we're going to carry on and see what else we can find. Oh, well, we have located on a nice herd of a buffalo, Cape of Buffalo, that is. As you can see, there's one female just watching us and uh, chewing on her cud. Uh, the rest is all lying down. One or two that's busy standing up now. I think they just stood up as we came in. But as you, very important for buffaloes like this, especially coming through the night and that, always lying very close together. Almost like a blanket of buffalo. And a big thing for that is safety, protection. So many times you'll find they'll put the young ones, the old ones, in the center of this blanket of buffaloes and protect them with the larger males and older females on the outskirts. But how stunning is this? And there is lion tracks, apparently lion tracks coming into Juma from uh, heading towards Kauri Dam, heading into this air, into this direction, like a southwesterly direction. So you never know what's on the outskirts, but clearly these buffaloes haven't been disturbed. They're not in any distress at all. They are very much relaxed coming through this morning. How oh, stunning. We'll look about maybe 60 to 80 of them in this herd. Very difficult to tell, but I think about, oof, I can even see some further behind, right at the back end as well. Maybe up to a hundred. You can see how I'm poised, panning slowly from one side to the other side, and that's how many buffaloes there are. There's a few, quite a few, yeah. A nice herd. And you usually find in winter time the herds become much larger compared to summer. Uh, reasons for, for that is they will really amalgamate in uh, winter time and just make those lo uh, herds larger due to the fact of uh, there's not as much grass that's available to them as in summertime. So you'll find the body condition, especially on drought uh, years, you'll find the body conditions do deteriorate a little bit and if they've got more in numbers, of course safety in numbers in winter time. Once the summer rains start falling down from about September, October, and the grasses start coming through, nice green grasses, and there's plenty of food around for them, and then you'll find sometimes they'll start breaking off into smaller factions. Because then, of course, their body condition increases and gets much better, much quicker in summertime. So then they'll fit. Fighting fit, as they say. A nice female there. Beautiful, some beautiful males in the back end, but it's very difficult to to see them. You'll see there's some there now, but look, you just see horns, buffaloes, and plenty and plenty of horns. How stunning is that, eh? But anyway, I think what we're going to do, I'm going to just do a little bit of a wide berth around them to see if any other cats might be trailing these buffaloes. While we do that, let's head over to Madikwe as James wants to say good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Northwest Province, Madikwe Game Reserve, where the sun has just popped up over the horizon. Well, I'd say about 10 minutes ago. I'm hoping that my voice is moving at the same time that the sound is reaching your ears. My name is James Henry. On camera today is Johan. That's his thumb. It's returned his thumb to us rather than the lacerated forefinger he demonstrated yesterday. Let's have another look at the sun. Our plan today is to hopefully go off towards the plains and see if we can find the cheetah mummy and her three bebes. But 
it could be already full of people. I'm not sure. I don't think so. I haven't heard anyone calling on the radio there. So I think we might be lucky in that respect. Uh, please do talk to us. As the others have no doubt told you, hashtag Wild Earth on the tweet tweet. Alternatively, it would be great to have your questions that you can send through on the website. And you can do that by registering for free. It was nice to have free things, don't you think? I think it's really nice. Bristol, Dave, you've been waiting for hours to start the safari. I hope, therefore, that you are in the Western Hemisphere, because if you are sort of central where we are, or in the East, you should probably have been asleep. No, I suppose if you're in the Eastern Hemisphere, that would have also make sense. Anyway, I hope you're not tired, Dave, and thank you for waiting for hours to watch. It's great to be with you, and great to be bringing you the wonders of Africa. It's always good to say Africa in the manner of Meryl Streep in Out of Africa. I had a farm in Africa at the foot of the Ngong Hills. <laughs> right, let's go back to the great leopard whisperer himself, and I will head off and try and whisper up some cheetahs. Right, so we're just back where this kill is. We can't find any tracks for him leaving this area other than just a big poo next to the road which is in the grass itself. So he might have just walked from the carcass just to come and defecate. So I just want to check properly what's going on here. So just bear with me as we get down here. It's not an easy point of access into this drainage line. It takes a bit of negotiating to get through. I don't see any sign of him and I certainly don't see any vultures or hyenas or anything like that sitting here. So he tends to tell me that he's gone but I just want to make a hundred percent sure that he's not sitting at the base with the kill just kind of gnawing away because there's no hyenas around. Sometimes Mulawati will do these kind of things where he'll bring the carcass down to feed because of the fact that he knows his daylight is coming and he's more visible. And if there's no hyenas around, they don't have to worry too much. Alrighty, let's go across here. I'm pretty sure that this will be all James, I haven't heard anything. Um, I did ask one of the guys, but he didn't get back to me by the time drive started this morning. Um, so, yeah, I haven't heard anything um, to indicate that, uh, or who it was, or what the update was. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure, actually, if I'm honest with you. But there's a piece of rib still in the tree that I couldn't see from the other side. Here's the skull on the ground here. Yeah? It looks pretty much done. You can see the horns there on the ground. I'm not going to obviously get out at this stage because he could just be lying here. Um, like yesterday when we first got here and the kill was in the tree, um, he obviously was around and we just didn't know because he was on the other side of this little bank. So I just want to scan around just in case, but it's pretty much done. It doesn't really look like there's any sort of food left. That's the, the sort of horns and the neck and then the ribs are still in the tree itself um, interesting though you know normally when something like that is on the ground hyenas pick it up and take it away but the hyenas didn't find this strangely enough I wonder if it's because it's been cold weather and obviously it's down in the drainage so you wouldn't have smelt very much at all hmm now the normal pattern of behavior for a leopard is once they eat like this is to try and go and see if there's some water that they can access so to try and find some sort of 
puddle water hole and I've checked Tumbeta, we've checked Philemon's dip. There is a natural water hole, well, natural sort of uh, mud wallow behind me here in the drainage further up. We might have gone there or there's another one on top here. But I don't know if they're holding water at the moment. Um, not sure where the... I'm just going to go over the horns here quickly. I'm not sure um, if they've dried or if they're still holding some water. I had him yesterday, he was up on top there. When we left him last night, just to give you an idea of how close he was, we were parked where I am now and he was on this little bear patch over there. So that's how close he actually let us be to him yesterday, which was pretty crazy. Alright, so I'm just going to check around the corner here, see if there's any sign of him on this side. Um, and then we'll probably move on if there isn't. Are you passionate about photography and the wild wonders of Africa? Introducing AfriCam's incredible virtual wildlife photo competition, where you don't need a fancy camera or to travel across the continent to capture breathtaking shots. All you need is your love for wildlife and our live waterhole cameras. Simply tune in and snap your favorite moments as they unfold in real time. Start clicking and share the magic of Africa with the world. On uh, Shibamu Road, just com coming off uh, Philemon's cut line, uh, the road that's just to the west of me, and we've got the male leopard tracks that's just going down this road. So I want to see how far and maybe we can locate on this a male leopard. Um, but I know if it's going to continue down here, it's going to go sometimes straight over our southern boundary into a little gari. But as I say, never know. Yeah, it's still on the side, still on the left hand side, you can see. Boom, shakalaka, let's go for it. Let's see if we can get it. It looks very fresh. I wonder if it's not, uh, I know uh, more whitey comes this side. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> no, I know. didn't say a red card. Oh, because I said boom, shakalaka. Okay, sorry. Oh, there's a, well, it, not really a leopard. Let's call it a, a mammal that's larger than a leopard. An elephant. I've got a youngster, two youngsters here. Yeah? Good morning. Oh, your 
cute youngster there. Uh, yeah, of course, grabbing a stone or, or something in this trunk. I'm not too sure. Playing around with it. Nope. Decided to leave that toy alone. How nice is this to have these elephants so early in the morning? What a start to our sunrise safari. Nope. Just trying to get some roots there. Trying to maybe break off a twig. I'm saying not the oldest small one, but you know, when I looked on the side of the trunk now, when we actually had a perfect view of its head, um, you can see the swelling that's happening now where the tusks are going to come through. You can see the swelling on the lips. So clearly, those tusks are slowly making their way out. And you'll start really getting to see those tusks. You start seeing them appearing out of the lip area at about four years old. All right, this little one maybe just about three and a half to get four, around that age. I see a little starling, a glossy starling, this busy running around at the back end. A beautiful herd. Young male that's going to be coming through here now. Look at the young boy. Hello, good morning, my boy. Mr. DM, yes, baby giant, indeed. DM, indeed. I always love watching these herds, especially with these little ones. It's just milling around this area and sometimes they show a little bit of attitude. Sometimes you'll find these young calves playing around with one another. There's always excitement with elephants. Never a bad thing to sit with them and enjoy a sighting. Catherine, mommy's here somewhere. There's a lot of elephants around. We don't, we're not seeing all of them. We can hear the watla, watla, watla here on the sides, but we can't see them. So I think at the end of the day, it might, uh, I'm sure she might make a, an appearance very soon, but I think she might be on the one side or the other side. But yeah, that little one is not too far from mom. And my old Gabe said this is one of his favorite animals. Indeed. Uh, fully agree with Gabe there. It is a, a stunning mammal to sit with and observe. See there's more coming. Look at this one coming through as well. And you can see that little one's tusks are really coming through very slightly. And there's a big one to the left. So you can see there's mommies and aunties and all of them around you. Oh, maybe wants to Push down that tree. That's a food. That's a, you can do it. You can do it. Oh. Too wobbly. Too wobbly. Anneli, look at this one. <laughs> you can do it. Ah, there he goes. Of course, he wants to show muscles and paw that the, he's also got uh, muscles as large as some paws. There you go. Look at that. I'm sure your muscles are much larger than in paws. <laughs> and Ali, thanks so much. Yes, what a lovely way to start this morning with Ellie's and of course Team Mpo and Cedric. This is the real MC, Mpo and Cedric. MC. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> this is the MC. <laughs> Of course, Nadine is our director this morning and she's having a chuckle there. Uh, she's having a chuckle there in the MC. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, Gab left her heading north towards Ingwe Alley. Sorry, I'm just letting the guys know. Uh, Gab had uh, Tlalamba yesterday morning heading towards Ingwe Alley. The guys want to go and try and follow up that side. But look at this. Yes, the little one is very chuffed with itself and pushed down that little tree. There's mom in the background coming to inspect the tree that uh, the little one pushed down. Saying, well, congratulations, that is a, a good choice in tree. So many times they'll push those silver cluster leaves down and really go for like the roots. They enjoy the silver cluster leaves roots. Uh, usually when, so especially in summertime when there's a lot of rain, the ground is much softer. When the ground is nice and soft, it's easy for them to push it over and get to those roots. But anyway, while we are gonna um, continue searching for this male leopard. We're going to see if we can get through this roadblock. Let's head over to James in Madikwe as he's also got some elephants. Here are some more elephants. This time they are Madikwe elephants. You'll see that they are covered in slightly redder soil than the ones at Juma. Um, update on the cheetahs, I'm afraid, is that the area is already inundated with eager punters and we just didn't want to apply further pressure. Uh, not on the cheetah because everyone's very good about applying any sort of pressure on the animals here, which is fantastic. Uh, we just don't want to get involved. Okay. We just don't want to get involved in a situation where we only have sort of five minutes and we rush in and we rush out. So we're just going to enjoy some elephants in the peace and quiet. There is a racing bank of clouds overhead which I didn't think was around this morning. It was so nice and clear. I thought it was going to be hot today but maybe I am incorrect. I'll have to have a look. Yeah, it's going to be 26 degrees. That's pretty warm. Oh, and there we have some suckling going on. I've always thought, you know, it's a lot for a lot of mammals, other than primates, it's seriously complicated to try and suckle. Or it look, just looks seriously, serious in uncomfortable. It looks seriously uncomfortable to try and suckle if you're not a primate being held to the breast, as it were. And as you get a bit, I mean, have you ever watched a, a, a zebra try and, and suckle? It, it looks like the foal must surely break its neck. And this also looks pretty awkward for the, the baby elephant. Um, I think it's Sarah who was asking whether or not the tusk that has just emerged will make things uh, difficult for the uh, for the mother it's Minji, Minji, not Sarah, I'm not sure where I got Sarah from Minji, uh, I, I don't think so I don't think it's, I mean I suppose you can see that little tusk there, it might be a little bit spiky on the sort of armpit region but I think it's okay it's not like a buffalo calf whose horns you know when they start to stand up and they start to hit the others of the of the cows I think that must be very uncomfortable and result immediately in a cessation of nursing This doesn't sound, look too bad. She's a young mum, this. She's probably about 
25, I would say. No, 20. Maybe her first cough. Those sounds just go straight through you. I'm sure Rex will be very, very excited to find wild dogs. Um, we've managed to find some Ellie's, which is always a treat. I thoroughly enjoy spending time with elephants. It's not a particularly big herd. There's kind of four or five of them that are sort of moving around. I don't know if we're just on the tail end at the moment. Um, but they are very, very much stationary and just having a lazy morning feed, which I suppose is fair enough. Um, there's a bit of a breeze that's blowing and so coming down towards the drainage lines seems like a far better idea. Um, but no sign of Mulawati. I checked that other mud wallow. It's dry so there's no no point in him going there. Um, I even sort of jumped off and had a walk around just to try and see if he wasn't tucked up somewhere um, further down the drainage but there was no sign of him anywhere. I suspect that he's moved on. Um, there's lots of vultures still in the area, so I was wondering if maybe to the south of that is where the initial carcass was because they're all kind of sitting there, but they seem so spread and kind of disinterested in what's going on that I don't think there's anything left um, for us to go and find. And so I think we'll start to broaden our search a little bit and start to go around. Um, there's really not enough meat at all to anchor him there any, any longer, so probably better that we kind of carry on. In the meantime though, like I said, we'll enjoy some Ellie's and some morning sun. You can see they're kind of gingerly feeding. It's not any sort of rush going on at the moment. Um, it's a slow, steady feed. I'm just breaking little branches here and there. And kind of enjoying a bit of sunshine, I would imagine, as well after a grey, cold day yesterday. It's uh, nice to have a bit of morning sun if you're an Ellie. You can see that Ellie looks very content, doesn't it, as it chews on its branch. Above the Ellie is also a brown hooded kingfisher, which is quite cool. 
Kabuki, you say you love me some elephants. I think we all do. Uh, elephants are amazing animals. I really, really, really have a lot of time for Ellie's. Um, they're gentle and relaxing, and I don't know, I find them relaxing. Some people don't, but um, I find sitting with a herd of elephants to be a very peaceful, kind of calming thing. Um, but that's the brown headed kingfisher that I was talking about, sitting very prettily in the sun. It's just turned its back now, and you can see the sort of iridescence. Um, of that blue wingtip and then that brown head which gives it its name. Um, they're pretty common out here. They become overlooked in the summer because the woodland um, completely dominates but in the winter months we see them all over the place. Um, if you drive the Mulawati you'll find two or three of them as you drive down. Um, it's not there. And they typically like these drainage line sections and while there are kingfishers these guys don't focus on fish. Um, They'll hunt insects, frogs, um, small rodents even. Um, so yeah, they don't have to be around water. All right, so from Ellie's and Juma, it sounds like James got Ellie's and Medikwe, so let's send you across to him. Right. Well, we haven't moved much. In fact, we haven't even shifted at all. And here's the young mum. She's got a kind of... dare I say weathered look to her? Looks a little thin. Like life's taking a bit of a toll. I suppose that's what comes with being a mum. There's also a fork-tailed drongo, not close, not too far away. You've got the drongo there. And as many of you know, the drongo is following her to catch the insects she might kick up. Now what I can smell, I'm sorry about the pole everyone, I can't start the vehicle right now, just simply because the elephant is too close. I can smell the aromatic scents of the turpentine grass which I showed some of you a few days ago it does uh, get very sort of turpentiney in smell as a defense against being eaten and I think that smell comes from the elephants kicking it because they're sort of semi sampling it with their trunks this little one's got a, a <laughs> got a stalk in its mouth of that turpentine grass but they're not eating it. They're just kind of testing it and maybe sampling the odd leaf and then leaving it alone. And that's interesting because it is a species of grass that defends itself with chemicals. I'm just going to move forward because alright, Rexon has managed to find himself an interesting antelope I'll get myself into another position or in fact out of here altogether I think Great, we have this beautiful, beautiful kudu here they're all like uh, five or six, all of them. These are the bachelor boys. All the time when they find kudu or buffalo, elephants, impala, once they started to create their own bachelor boys, it's all about the, the healthy conditions. They're all more concerned about themselves. They need as much as they can away from the female and choose the area where it could be much more food and viability of course of the water source where they can enjoy with that interaction of mating and other other stuff that takes place remember each and every animals out in the world is survival of the fittest if you're not fit if you're not well you're not able to mate so here is chances of them to build up in the body system in order to be selected by the female and all of them as you can see 
They're in a very different age. They help one another. They might go in a different area. Soon they build up the body system where they can able to really find themselves in the status where the female can accept them for mating. It's all about conditions and how good you are, how strong you are. It's all that um, really encourage the female to be accepting a male that uh, wants to mate and pass on the healthy gene. Are oh, beautiful. There's one kudu just behind the thicket that the horns are such amazing. One of the impressive horns, I believe, is walking behind the thicket there. Unbelievable. Sometimes it's very rare to see kudu. Look at that. The biggest kudu that uh, uh, I've seen, not uh, yet here, but Jeremiah, you find kudu that have once at least the about meter plus. Yes, that's the biggest kudu. One I've seen, 1.3, 1.4, and tall and really healthy, big, and weigh at least up to um, 300, up to 450 or 500 kg. That is the heaviest kudu that uh, I've seen around. But uh, yeah, it's very impressive. It's only one mile that uh, BK is on at the moment. That is the biggest kudu that uh, within this head. And really amazing. Look at that, uh, the ears. They can able to hear something far. They are very good in the sense of hearing. And these guys, once they get to engage with danger, they almost bark like a dog. This is a beautiful, beautiful species. We rely on most of time on the kudu if they're in the area, give us indication of where is the uh, leopard and lions because they can really tell us in most cases barking or lambing. Oh, look at the horns, unbelievable. If you look at that white uh, color that across below the eyes, it helps quite a lot at night. With the cutie here, now let's take you to Tristan, with uh, still looking for Mlawati. I was still sitting with our Ellie. I always, like I say, enjoy spending time with elephants. There's something very calming about it. And given <clears throat> that we're not far from where that area of that kill was, it also is a nice place just to sit and listen. So, I mean, the Ellies do make a little bit of noise and they kind of rummage around and break grass and trees and various things, but um, it's close enough that if there was an alarm call or something like that, we'd be able to pick it up. It's kind of why I'm also sitting here. When we first came down here this morning, actually before we saw the vultures earlier, we heard a whole bunch of birds alarming in this sausage tree. So there was go away birds, there was um, a few dark-up bulbuls and sunbirds and they're all sort of shouting 
and I thought maybe just maybe there was something lurking here and so nice the ellies are crumbling um, and so with the ellies kind of coming now down into this area potentially they could also flush whatever it was whether it be an owl or a mongoose or a snake or a um, or a leopard itself you never know so um, just thought it'd be worth sitting with them for a while and, and listening and seeing what they get up to and whether or not something shows itself um, the amount of times I found other animals by just sitting with the elephants is actually quite staggering there often animals that will kind of sit and feed and, and because you sit stationary with them you pick up all these things around them i had a tracker once that always said that there's always leopards near elephants i don't know why he believed it um bell pepper so the holes in the elephant's ears um and just generally little injuries that get bigger with time um so when they you know, Val Peter, sorry, Val Peter. Um, Nadine is is clearly thinking about breakfast and is talking about bell pepper rather than bell Peter. So um, <laughs> the holes in Ellie's ears are actually um, it's just little small injuries. So often they get them when they're very young, um, and like a little thorn or something like that will poke through um, as they're walking along and then as they grow and the ear grows so that hole develops and get bigger and bigger and bigger so that's all that is it's just little injuries or when they play fighting one nicks the other one with a tusk or something along those lines um, that's generally what causes those types of injuries um, there's also genetic deformities I've seen you know ears that flop and um, you know ears that are, are not formed correctly that does happen as well it's going to reverse back because they're just kind of drifting behind us a little bit so go a little bit further back and get the light right and help Rian here a little bit faces rather than their bottoms. Uh, James would be complaining if it was just their bottoms. All right, I'm going to hang out with them for a little while longer, Let's see what else we can hear or what they get up to. Do you love relaxing at a waterhole with the sights and sounds of Africa all around you? Well, we have some really exciting news for you. From August 1st, AfriCam is joining forces with Wild Earth to bring the majesty of Africa right into your living room with nine incredible new waterhole cameras from across South Africa and Kenya. Get ready to embark on a new journey. This is Live at the Waterhole.
professional field guide in the African bush? Eco Training's professional field guide course can make that dream a reality. This comprehensive program comprises approximately five months of theoretical and practical training in the African bush, with highly qualified instructors where participants will complete various certificate courses. You'll learn essential skills such as animal behavior, tracking and identification, as well as gaining in-depth knowledge of the African bush and its ecosystems, all while living in a real-life safari camp. But the learning doesn't stop there. Following the theoretical and practical training, students will embark on a placement program period of five to six months. During this time, you'll work alongside professional staff and management at a property, putting your newly acquired skills into practice and gaining substantial practical experience. You'll be fully prepared for a fulfilling and rewarding career as a professional field guide. Enroll today, locally or internationally. Take the first step towards your dream Bushveld job today. We have found a spectacular sighting of Fricky, the wildebeest. And Fricky has just heard that he's gone live on camera, and so he has stood up to show us his magnificent visage. Hello, Fricky. How are you today? Well done for making it through the night. <clears throat> I can't help thinking his attitude to us, or maybe it's just me, is dismissive. Maybe not. He's turned as if to say, no, it's just that I'm shy. And also, I've heard that you love to look at animal bottoms. And so here, I am showing you mine. As he chews his cud. So, I suppose, quite a tricky time of the year for all of the herbivorous animals out here, and especially those that like fresh grass. There is not a lot of fresh grass around. It's all dry, and they've got another two months of this, at least two and a half months of this dry stuff before it'll turn green with a bit of rain. But, as Bella says, Fricky is looking like he has a very shiny coat, and I think he looks in very fine condition. Whereas some of the impala I've seen look a little rougher than Fricky. And as I've said a few times while I've been here at Madikwe, the blue wildebeest is a very underrated animal in terms of its ability to cope in stressful situations and stressful environments. Because they will quite comfortably live in semi-desert if they can find the odd bit of water now and again. And impala do not have the same tolerance for a lack of water. I've been surprised that I suppose we're right on the edge of the sort of distribution change between impala and springbok. And just north and west of here, it'll start to get too dry for impalas. But here it's obviously just wet enough for them but I don't think they thrive like a chap like Fricky does. In fact, there are a lot of wildebeest on this reserve, and they all seem to be looking pretty good. Um, the Lara Cam, I'm afraid I missed that. I was, I was busy thinking, and my small brain can't think and speak at the same time. So I shall wait for your comment to come through once again. Oh, no, I don't blame him. Fricky is not impressed with his name. Uh, Lara Cam, no, he probably isn't. It's not his official name, just in case anybody gets insulted that we haven't had a sufficiently long and involved political voting process before the name was given. Uh, Fricky is the name that Johan have give, and I have given to uh, probably three or four different, <laughs> different canoes who happen to be on their own. 
Why fricky? Well, Johan, why fricky? I don't know, it sounds good for this area. It sounds good for this area. This is an area where you might find fricky on a farm, I guess. Hey? <laughs> or hanging out at the general dealer just outside the gate of the reserve. <laughs> yeah, Claire, you're not wrong. Another bum faced in our general direction. I'm not sure if I should feel insulted by it or not, or honoured that the word has got around that that's what we like to film. And so everybody's trying to put their best bum forward or backward, I'm not sure which you'd say. He does look a little depressed, but it might be because of the clouds. It was such a clear, beautiful morning, and now it's just got dull. I do think that it's going to probably warm up quite a lot and that it will clear up as well. So Fricky's general sadness with the state of the weather is, is not necessarily um, something that is going to... I've completely lost train of what I was saying. Uh, I think that it's going to clear up and so Fricky's depression at the weather is not going to last. Uh, Kathy, you want to know why he's on his own? He's on his own because he is a territorial bull and he will be hoping desperately for some females to come around at some stage and then he will herd them into his little territory and try and make them feel at home and so they want to hang around in his territory. I'm not sure that he's going to have a lot of success. The wildebeest needs three things in his territory. One is a shady tree, none here for Fricky. Uh, one is a, uh, a, a midden, uh, I'm sure he's got a midden here, and the other is a source of water, and he doesn't have that either. Bad luck, Fricky. All right, over to Cedric. Uh, he's got some birds for you. Thank you, James. Uh, nice that you got to Fricky, the wildebeest there in Medikwe. Uh, we've got a uh, beautiful pied king fisher. I'm just looking at the bands. The male will have those two bands. I think it is a male. Sorry, I just want to quickly double check. It is a male. It's got like uh, two bands under the beak, across the chest area, where the female will just have the one band. So this is a male pied king fisher. The female's around here as well. We do see her quite often. We actually see the female more often than this male. But as you can see, he is perched up on this uh, leadwood bush or tree. What's well, a bush becoming a tree one day? And sometimes they'll use these little perches as a hunting point. Instead of hovering, they'll rather sit and wait to see if there's any little bit of movement in the water. It spots some fish moving around. Of course, that Pied King Fisher will dive straight down into the water and snatch the fish out from there, from the surface. But they are beautiful. I think the Pied King Fisher is uh, one of the kingfisher species that we see most here on uh, Juma, due to, of course, all the water holes that we do have around here. Them and, of course, the brown hooded the brown hooded kingfisher but as you know this is a live and interactive show so if you've got any any questions or comments that you want to send through to us we are watching of course on the app or the wild earth website make sure you do register which is very simple and easy you can send those comments and questions through to us and keep us on our toes 
we will keep you entertained. But wasn't it marvelous having El Gab on a drive? I'm sure we will be seeing him very shortly again. Fantastic, fantastic guide. Always nice to have another guide here that's been in the Sabi Sands and also knows the characters. And he's also quite a joker as well at camp. Did you know that the Wild Earth team makes weekly behind the safari content? <laughs> Would you like to get to know the Wild Earth family better? <laughs> See how we live. This is Igor's bedroom. Learn about our production process and see the antics that happen off camera. <laughs> Sign up to be an explorer and you will get access to all this content and more. <laughs> oh no, sorry, just having a bit of a giggle with uh, Nadine giving Umpo some uh, some flack yeah? <laughs> in the comms, but it's always good fun. But yeah, it's nice just to sit here and just to sit uh, around the dam area, as I say, watching this Pied King Fisher. I was hoping that it's going to dive into the water soon for us and to see if we're going to get some, uh, some uh, how can I say, live kills on on screen. And there's a lot of little tilapias that's swimming around here. Of course coming in from the main dam area and sometimes if it overflows during the very wet, wet seasons they'll tend to end up in the dams, the eggs or even the fish itself, the little fish that will just make their way to these little pans. Well, we're just bumbling at this stage. We left our earlies. They went into quite a dense part of the drainage line, so I wasn't going to go off-roading for them after we had had them nicely out in the open. 
Let's let them do their thing. So we're just kind of checking up on this northwestern side of Juma. I don't think anyone's been up this way yet this morning. No idea. Tried to use the radio, but it doesn't seem to be working this morning. So we're just on our own little bumble, and whether somebody's been here or not, we'll see what we can find. Um, but Cedric was chatting about cars and things like that, and he has been quite a gentleman. He let me use Rusty, which is always nice. Uh, the boys tend to prefer Rusty and the girls all tend to prefer Wendy. I don't know why that is, but um, it seems to have kind of been the trend over the years. Um, Rusty's always been a favorite car for me too. Uh, although I did spend a vast majority of time in Wendy at one point when we were <clears throat> doing a lot of the thermal stuff. We had uh, the thermal camera mounted on Wendy, so did a few months on it. Um, which was okay. Just, they're all good cars these, they're just Rusty's better, that's all. Um, I know others will beg to differ, but I always have found Rusty to be the best vehicle. It's got the most power and the most ability off-road. Um, just feels better, I think. So Cedric has been a gentleman. We'll see if, if Cedric has a bad day, then maybe we'll change back over and you can use Rusty again. Um, I just have to, to see how it goes. Because last night Cedric was sulking about having to be in Wendy this morning. I think he came round and during the night and decided that this morning he was okay to be on Wendy once again. All right, hopefully we're going to find some sign of tracks. Well, exactly, Nadine. He does sulk about those things. Last night Cedric was sulking. I don't know why. We came back from drive and Cedric was sulking. I even was going to ask him if uh, we could follow the drag mark from his bottom lip, but um, he's, he, he was actually not too bad. It was at dinner. He came right and was laughing with us at dinner. Um, so, typical Cedric. Always good for a laugh. Maybe that's true, Nadine. That could be true. All right, guys. I think we're going to try and see if we can find some tracks. I'm hoping for maybe Tortoise Pan or Zemba up in the north here. Um, I'm also just bumbling because I haven't been on Juma for so long. It's nice just to check around and see how everything is looking and see what's happening where and which wallows have got water in them. So this is an exploratory drive this morning in many ways. Um, just to check and see who's been moving about where. I think somebody has driven here. I see there's one track coming down, but it's not one of our vehicles. It looks like a game viewer from one of the lodges. Um, that's really ideal. But really, in the mornings, don't like driving roads that others have driven. It feels like a waste for me. Um, unless, of course, you're on tracks and the tracks head to those directions. Um, it just kind of feels like if everyone just does their own roads, then we're covering a lot more distance and therefore more chance of finding things. Um, but yeah, somebody's definitely driven here this morning. Hello, Impalas. It's actually a really nice group of Impalas, this big herd. Typical for this area, they're always on this open clearing. Um, Natalie, probably the ability to kind of track leopards on at my own sort of pace and do it my own way. Um, it's hard when you're not at a at Juma because you know when I go to all these other camps, generally we're with a guide um, and tracker or just a guide, and you know you can't just because of liabilities and things like that. You can't, you know, as a a guest at a camp be jumping off vehicles and tracking and doing those kind of things so I think that the tracking is one thing and then the other part of it is the familiarity of it um, you know spend so much time on this property that it's gotten to that point now where I kind of know the game paths very well know where all the water points are um, and that always makes it much 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 easier in terms of finding animals um, so those are probably the two things that I miss the most um, it's yeah, it can be tough when you go to other places and you kind of see the fresh tracks and you just want to get off and go and walk them or something like that and you, you obviously you can't. Um, but that's not to say that I don't love the fact that I've been, you know, traveling a lot this year and I've had some very, very, very crazy cool experiences. Um, 
with all kinds of different animals from snow leopards to black leopards to tigers to gorillas. Um, it's been a, a pretty, pretty epic year. Um, but yeah, those are probably the things I miss the most. Um, I would probably say that Cedric would say that it's him that I miss the most, but that would not be a correct statement at all. Um, so yeah, the ability to track and then the familiarity of Juma would be the, probably the two biggest ones that I miss. Um, it's always nice coming back here because it feels like it's just sort of second nature and you can just go bumbling around and you kind of know exactly where you're going and what you're doing and um, where to go and look for things. So I always enjoy that feature. <laughs> Nadine is saying that he's not sure well, she's not sure that anyone would miss Cedric. Well, I don't think a lot of the viewers would miss Cedric, Nadine. I think uh, a lot of the viewers would. I mean, in camp, I don't know. Rian, do you reckon any of us would miss Cedric in camp? Hey? Cedric, do you think we'd miss him if yeah. he wasn't in camp? I think we would as well. Cedric's always good for a laugh. That's the best part about Cedric, is that you know that no matter what the day is bringing and no matter how kind of much work you've got to do or what's happening, Cedric will always come up with something that will make you laugh and I always enjoy that. <laughs> I think it makes me chuckle when he, he's the character that he is. Um, busy, busy fella, old Cedric. And it was good to see him. It's been a, you know, it's been a long time with Cedric. The first time we started working together was all the way back in 2011. Um, so, oh, Cedric says he's touched by those comments. It's true, I, I enjoy working with Cedric. He's a, uh, He's always very committed to the cause, and like I say, um, he's, a, he's a happy go lucky fella. All right, but back to the impalas and the wildlife. Um, <laughs> don't worry, Cedric, we will miss you, I promise you. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to the impala just now. Um, we'll see kind of what else is lurking and see if there's anything that's bumbling about around them. Stay up to date with the latest happenings at Wild Earth. Discover what goes on behind the scenes and get a weekly recap of the best moments on the channel. He's got it, he's got it! And he's straight up a tree! Sign up to be an explorer and receive our newsletter written just for you and sent straight to your inbox every week. Wild Earth Explorers, a club for people who are passionate about nature. Thank you for joining us and have a fantastic morning.
it'll be nice to see these two male leopards maybe they're competing here because uh, of course it has to be one dominant male you might find that uh, the other one could be a young uh, male leopard that getting into the area trying to establish its own territory I mean moving into the dominant territories all the time it's in the nature that the blood circulation has to change and it just substitute the male if he's getting if you get old then your blood will come and take over from you as a leopard All right, once again, as I say, very important in our industry that we do quite a bit of a road maintenance or bush clearing. And you know me, if I, if I bump into a tree that's lying over on a road or a big branch like this, remove it. I think it's very important instead of creating a whole new two track around here and uh, rather just get out of the vehicle. Very simple, pick up this tree and roll it over roll it over so at least of course and Paul is very jealous at the moment sitting behind the camera seeing me really displaying my my muscles strength and uh, yes don't worry Paul I'll show you how to do it one day I'll show you how to pick up the weights how to pick up branches no, I'm just joking Paul can pick up the entire tree Trust me, <laughs> I think Mpo is definitely the strongest person at camp. He is our Chuck Norris. All right, we're gonna continue. I'm gonna go carry on on Ledwood Road and those male leopard tracks from Twin Dams. They went straight south into Little Gauria. Unfortunately, we cannot follow up there. So I thought maybe just gonna do a little bit of Leadwood Road and shoot all the way around to Central. Head back to Gauri Dam. Because um, I know that, as I said, Gabe had uh, at Lumber yesterday morning. He had it close to Ingwe Alley. So, but then again, you know, Tlalamba, that female leopard, she knows how to move. Hmm. You find her on one side of a territory one morning and the next, next drive she'll be on the opposite side. So she can move. But so, let's go take a look. Let's go look on the eastern side. Indeed, Nadine, Tlalamba does not mess around. I also got an update about the black dam males. So there's nothing on the hippo carcass that is finished. Um, the black dam male lines have gone all the way west. Camilla, <laughs> thank you. Yes, uh, well, you know, we've got to have a little bit of entertainment on the on the show and uh, showing what we need to do. It's not always about the animals. We have to, of course, show our maintenance side of things and uh, how to maintain the roads and how to conduct a game drive those kind of things yes very important okay talking about the black tail mail sorry i was uh, sidetracked there got an info update uh, the black tail males those two male lines they went all the way west onto shirley's and uh, apparently they had an altercation with the two telemati sub-adult males so those uh, telemati sub-adult males those two boys young boys and the black dam males had a bit of a, a headbutt there. 
Anyway, while we're going to continue, let's head over to Tristan as he's got some impalas. We are still with our impalas. They're a bit jittery this morning. It's a kind of cold wind that's blowing and so whenever it's breezy and windy, impalas tend to not be that comfortable. Um, it messes with their hearing and their ability to smell and so they typically then start to get into these tightly packed groups um, where most of them are sort of looking around and ruminating. They try not to have their heads down for too long and also don't try and stray too far from one another. You'll also find that they sit out in the open a little bit and they don't go into the thickets. If it was a sort of non-breezy day you'd have found already these impalas would have probably made their way down towards the thicker vegetation and start browsing as they go. For now though they'll just do a little bit of grazing, ruminating and just kind of try and stay where they can actually see what's going on rather than having to worry about hearing or sense of smell. You can see how the quarry bushes are moving um, with the wind and so these cold winds often bring about a change in behavior in animals so Ellie's moving into drainage lines um, you know buffalo or so none of them really particularly like windy days eagle lover pleasure I was what we're supposed to be doing out here um, it's uh, it's always a treat to be able to share with people kind of experiences that I've had and you know things that we've learned along the way um, and that goes for all of us that that are naturalists at um, Wild Earth. I think there's a reason a lot of us do it is to be able to to share experiences and, and knowledge and um, the best part about Wild Earth is that it's not a one-way street um, you know because of the the loyal viewership that we've got and uh, many of you have watched for a very, very, very long time. There's a return of that information too towards us. Um, you know, obviously nowadays where a lot of us are freelancing and kind of coming in and out, we can't keep tabs on everything as well as we used to when we lived here. Um, and so a lot of you are invaluable in being able to help us um, know what's going on and also just giving little tidbits of information that you've managed to glean and learn as you guys have also gone and delved deeper. I mean, for example, you know, the, the whole Hukumuri story is a great one. So Michael Fleetwood, who um, managed to find that Hukumuri came from, from Crocodile Bridge. I mean, that's, you know, information we wouldn't have had as guides and probably wouldn't have ever found out. Um, so, you know, that's that helps then build a, a picture and a story of, of where animals are coming from and helps us understand distribution patterns better. So that's a big thing about this is that there is a return um, of, of knowledge and, and experiences. I mean, a lot of you also go on safari and so you've seen things and um, <clears throat> I like the fact that we can kind of have a conversation. I mean, it's obviously a little bit more tricky to have a sort of normal conversation, but there is still a, f a feedback loop that can take place where we can kind of discuss different topics and that's always pretty special. Um, so it's, it's nice to be here and, and kind of do that. I always said that you know, the, my years as a permanent uh, naturalists with, with Wild Earth were always some of the best and, and were the ones that I learned the most um, you, with a lot of like-minded individuals and this kind of questions and, and the way the, the conversations go because of the longevity of, of the show um, always means that you get into these pretty interesting um, conversations and go into pretty interesting topics that you might not necessarily get with with normal guests that are only out for three, four days and don't typically um, think up, you know, things um, as deeply as, as what we do on the show. Um, you know, I've had some crazy questions in time. I remember the one time we had how much, um, something to do with how much oxygen saturation there was within an elephant's blood. I don't know, I can't even remember it now. It wasn't asked to me, it was asked to somebody else, but... I remember, you know, all of us going through books and trying to figure it out, and I think there's a cool element to that. I, I like the fact that we we have to go and kind of research things deeper. But our impalas, for now, are super easy and chilled, so I think we're going to let them go and do their own thing. Carry on sort of bumbling to the north here. Um, if Cedric's been giving updates on the black dam males and the hippo carcass, it means he went all the way to Chitwa. 
Um, so he's on the far east, so I might as well just bumble around this western side and see what else is here. Alrighty, while well, we go and find some other things to look at, it sounds like Rex has found something on Pridelands, so I'll send you across to him. Great, uh, beautiful here. We have breeding herd of an elephant. As you know, that followed by Foxtail Drunk, we just saw. Unbelievable. You can hear that that it's a youngster seeking an attention from the mother to stop in order to nest. It's not a time because this animal, elephant, because the home brain species, they walk kilometers at night, uh, non-stop feeding. So the youngster by now, it tells you that it's tired. It's time to get an attention from the mother in order to nest. It's in the nature of a youngster once they feel like they're so tight, they'll give that uh, kind of uh, a call to let the mother to give a little bit of a moment where it can nest from the mother. It's really beautiful. Most of the time, you tend to see once the youngster do this, the female will start to slow down. The rest of the head, they're not going to move. They might take time here, not moving very fast because the youngster now that are tired, they need, of course, to nest from the mother. The breeding herd of elephant here, yeah, it's such amazing. We see number of number of an elephant. I believe the elephant that you can see here at Pride and Echo Training Safari Life in a day. It could be over 100 to up to 200 elephants in a very good day. Of course, if it's too hot, more especially at Nlofu Dam, you tend to see lots of elephants um, visiting the dam itself. The water source itself, it loved by the elephant. And also, it might be the one of the biggest water sources into the west of the conservancy where everybody likes to come down and have water. Amazing. We try to calculate how many elephants are involved here. They can be more than, then they can more than, I mean, easily up to 30, 40 elephant individuals, which is such amazing. A big head, which is mixed up with the young males. The young males they just get um, sometimes join and uh, feel very good uh, be with the female, and sometimes they'll go their own direction. It's in their nature. They don't stay permanent in a metric society. All that you see there, the old young males, they start to uh, really separate themselves slowly by show. Young males love to swim and play in most cases. And developing all the skills of future requirement as far as fighting, mating. We, we tend to see quite a lot of that uh, once the young males, all of them get involved or more than two or three get involved. They will be practicing quite a lot of skills. Look at that. Behind the thicket, you can see there's a bull elephant, very massive body size between a male and a female. It's a huge difference. You can see even the head shape. Male have a very small head where the male have a very huge and massive body of a head. Then it tells you that uh, that is the male. A male can weigh up to 67 ton easily where the female they weigh up to three and a half, up to four ton, very easy. If it's the biggest female, she might weigh up to 4.5, up to five uh, tons, but it's very rare to come across that way. But males are heavy. They have heavy, they have heavy body in order to really protect themselves, fighting, and also really it makes life easy for them when they approach the female and really accept it, more especially if they're in a very good condition. I love elephant. Elephant is one of the species in my life. I mean, be with the elephant every day, it becomes my teacher of my own life. They really respect one another according to their age and they can welcome everybody according to their age and are able to teach what's right. That's the reason in most cases you find them forming the bachelor boys. It's all about uh, transferring skills of how to survive and how to uh, pay respect 
in most of the things that you come across in the area. Beautiful. Look at this female. The task. Such amazing. These animals are family orientated. They are all know one another. Even the males that joins here, the mites, some of them. Are you passionate about photography and the wild wonders of Africa? Introducing AfriCam's incredible virtual wildlife photo competition where you don't need a fancy camera or to travel across the continent to capture breathtaking shots. All you need is your love for wildlife and our live waterhole cameras. Simply tune in and snap your favorite moments as they unfold in real time. Start clicking and share the magic of Africa with the world. Great, we are enjoying this uh, beautiful, beautiful breeding out of an area. You can understand also choosing this uh, part of a uh, high ground. At the same time, while they're moving here, they enjoy energy from the sun. You can tell, no doubt, all of them are right at the perfect position to enjoy that. Remember, at night, it's very cold here. These animals moving in the area, they get um, cold. And early part of the morning, when the sun rises, they love to be in an area where they can expose a little bit into the heat. It's really needed energy, it needed in the body system, or heat needed in the body system that can make them even move, uh, being active around in the area. When the blood flows while a little bit uh, warm, it makes themselves even decide better which area they need to go. Because if it's too cold, sometimes you have to be selective on the area that you move. This animal, of course, is one of the amazing, amazing species. Cause of a night, yes, they get uh, exposed a little bit of a heat. In the course of a day, when it's very hot in the area, they absorb quite a lot of heat in the area and go down to the water to cool down. So all the time for them, they have to be in and out in area where it's always a water source and it has to be uh, cooled down by wallowing or drinking. It's really important if you want to see elephant most of the time during the course of a day going around water holes is more important. If you look at this young male here, he's really enjoying quite a lot, debarking on all these um, twigs that they eat. They remove all the hard cover 
uh, or Conrea layer that uh, are really highly nutritious. This time of the year, you see quite a lot of an elephant doing that, likes to uproot the trees, going for the roots, or go to a specific tree that knows that they really I mean, host quite a lot of nutritious um, on the bark itself. It's just amazing. That's the reason you tend to see quite a lot of trees. As far as marula and crop thorn, they get hammered quite a lot with the elephant. Jade, are uh, you asking question? Both male and the female, I, uh, I didn't copy that. Uh, you can help me, BK, there. Uh, okay. In, mo in most cases, when it comes to the attitude and aggressiveness of the species, female, in most cases, are very low to anger. It's only young males, if they separate it, yes, they show quite a lot of aggr aggression if you come across with them. A male breeding herd of the elephant, in most cases, you have to know how to approach them, most especially opposite the wind all the time and approach, you will see them, they won't be even showing off. The reason behind that, all the time in the metric society or female structure, they have matriarch. A matriarch, his duty is to make sure that all these young female and young male that within the structure of a matriarch, he teaches them how to behave. Sometimes if you find an elephant really show the aggression, maybe towards a vehicle or human being, it might be the experience that they had previously that makes them not uh, to be happy. And it's not all the time. In different locations, you tend to see elephant in nature, they're very aggressive due to the history background of that particular area. Some of them, you may find that uh, they have experienced that human being, if they come towards them, it might be get it poached or they might be try to interact with them because some of the area they don't want elephant. They even shoot guns, make sound, and the elephant run away. Once they get to those areas and experience that, once the human being come, they will know that it might interfere in their lives. That's the reason they show aggress aggressiveness in, in different locations. Elephant where we are here, because they use all the time, vehicles will come and go, see them. They even show the certain behavior that is not known. You tend to see elephant coming towards the vehicle and trying to place the trunk on top of the vehicle and move off like that way. It's very rare to see that, but it's only an elephant that have a very trust of a human being, and they know that uh, there's nothing that can happen in most cases. I'll take an example. If you go to uh, far east, East Africa, Gorozu National Park, those elephant, once they see vehicle, they just run away. But here, seeing vehicle, it's all the time. They really love and welcome that. Beautiful. You see that behind. You see. You see the movement of the trunk. These animals. They use their trunk for everything that they do. Even get to um, know what's going on. A trunk. It will be an, um, an organ that uh, first read whatever it comes. They use trunk to sense of a smell. They can read through the smell. Even if another elephant coming, they can read that elephant coming from the distance using the trunk. Also, when they come to collect food, they can tell which food is uh, very healthy to eat. Uh, I mean, if food is poisonous, they will tell through the trunk. And also use the trunk also to pick some logs and other stuff around in the area. And sometimes they use it even for fighting. You tend to see that uh, when they scare like hippos and the elephant, they use the trunk. The muscles on the trunk, it's such amazing. They got a lot of muscles. And they can train the trunk to do everything they want. Even picking small thing, even amarula, you tend to see them use the trunk to pick amarula on the ground and feed with it. I've learned over many years that the elephant, yes, of course, is one of the most intelligent species. I remember in one of the lodge where we used to um, close the gate by slang and put from one area to another. I don't know how the elephant figure out. It could be the smell that where we all touch. 
and they can open the gate of slang like that pull out, out and let it down and get in sometimes they can even a boom gate they can do that open it and get in when they come back they reopen and went out and you might uh, think someone have left the gate not closed these animals they can know all of that they can figure out in different things how it works at themselves because it's a highly highly intelligent a wild animal able to do that sometimes you tend to see them even opening taps of water to drink water it's really amazing unbelievable look at that the elephant they use molars to to really grind food and anything that they eat although you tend to see many cases on the dung itself whatever they eat they come through so never ever play with an elephant dung because if they eat thorns they might come as it is if you kick it you might get uh, uh, poked with the all these thorns that they eat here so you have to be careful also when you open it because it could be a lot of things sharp objects that can really hurt you it is amazing i see that uh, these two here that we own at the moment they are in the same age in most cases elephant they enjoy company of age especially when they're still young the young elephant they love to move all together best rain terrain oh yes the best terrain uh, for an elephant to survive if you look at the area here where the savannah a uh, hoodland this is the elephant this is the perfect environment. If you look at the number of elephants that within this area of the Greater Cook National Park, if it's not savanna woodland, I don't believe they will able to, um, the ground actually, able to give the quality food that they're getting in the area. If they're in area where it's a desert or somewhere else, pretty much will be able to see now, in nature take its own course, they will be start to starve and die. But here, all the time, it looks like uh, it's half a food, half a water for them. And the number of population of an elephant is still gonna be more and more without even showing off from the animal itself. Condition wise, it will be still the same. The next 10, 15 years, of course, we'll see elephant happy, eating, pushing. But what we see quite a lot now, honest speaking, you see quite a lot of destruction on trees, especially big trees are getting killed because they debark. And that is a great sign to tell that uh, overpopulation of these animals are taking over everywhere. Debarking of the trees is very huge, especially the big canopy trees are getting killed by ring barked all the time. But still doesn't show um, these animals going down or getting weak. They're still getting stronger because there's quite more food. They'll kill more trees, but in the next 20 or 30 years is where we might start to see downfall of them being so highly populated. If you look at the area where there's quite a lot of uh, trees, they push trees, and that it allow more grass to grow during the course of the uh, rain season. If you look at the grass level, it's still very great. If trees are no longer pro providing, I believe that... Uh, these quite a lot of grass that uh, elephant can be able to survive and of course nothing get worse than out in a bush from elephant here to pride land let's join Cedric in Juma and see what he's up to Thank you, Rexon. Yes, I am now on the fire break on the northern area of uh, Juma. We've got the Lion Pride uh, tracks that's on this uh, road, heading straight towards Mvubu Road and uh, heading west. 
So I think this must be for the Talamati. You can see still quite a few tracks here, small ones and a few larger ones. So I'm sure it's the Talamati breakaways. So let's see if we can find that pride of lions, which would be wonderful for the morning. So yes, you can get some cats on the screen. All right, I'm just taking an easy road to track here. The sand is soft, still got the tracks here. Nice and soft, so we don't have to look too hard to follow their tracks. All right, well, we're gonna follow up on the, the, this Pride of Lions. So let's head over to uh, James in Madikwe to see what's happening on his side. Well, we found a new kind of antelope that we haven't seen here before. And it is not Fricky or Freddy or Jakobus or Kobus or Yaku. It is a Hartebeest. In fact, two Hartebeests or Hartebeeste. Isn't that amazing? They are just... <laughs> I mean, they're the weirdest looking creatures, in my opinion. I, I, I can't really work out why they should look like that. Um, sort of strange horns. And I, I mean, they're not, they're not, uh, I, I said to, I said to Nadine, who is directing the show today, she said, well, I'll come over to you just now. I said, oh, no, you need to come over now because it's rare. I mean, it's it's not rare in so much as it's um, an animal that is threatened. It's just rare for this area. And I don't, I find all of these, what we call um, acephal acephaline, I think it's acephaline, is that what we call them? Yes, the acephaline, which is the subfamily of antelope, antelope very odd, the sesabees and the hartebeests. This long sort of mournful face. But there it is. I'm just trying to find out the origin of its Latin name, which is Alcephalus Bucephalus and Bucephalus was Alexander the Great's horse as far as I remember and I can't really believe that uh, Alexander the Great's horse looked like a sesame. I would have thought that was that would uh, would be just strange strange uh, strange thing for him to have ridden I can't find out why he's called so. Alcephalus bucephalus. It's not bucephalus. It's bucephalus. So it's got nothing to do with Alexander the Great's horse at all. It's me and my slight dyslexia. Bucep. No. Yes, bucephalus. Bucephalus. There we go. Chatting around the fire is an ancient practice that has connected humanity for centuries and we want to keep it alive in our modern age. As an explorer, you'll have access to intimate gatherings with our naturalists, fascinating guests and experts where we share knowledge, insights and stories around a crackling fire. Rediscover the power of connection. Sign up to be an explorer today and experience the magic of Wild Earth's Fireside Chats.
Yes, so other members of the subfamily, or Al are the Beotragus, which is just the Hirola, very odd animal. It looks like a sort of large impala, very rare, horn of Africa. The Damaliscus genus, which includes the Tsetsebi and the Bontobok, and then the Alcephalus here. Very nice. Oh, and the Conochetes, which is the wildebeest. I just heard it call, it went, eh. Sounds a little bit wildebeestish, which I suppose makes a lot of sense. And I think, in fact, the entire family has got females with horns. Yes, they do. All of the females in this family are horned. Fantastic to see a red heart beast disappearing into the bush. Goodbye. Well, we're down on the southern boundary of Juma because the guys say that there's tracks for Shadili and the Cub crossing to our side. I can't find any of those tracks. I can only find tracks for a male and it goes back into Little Gauri again. Um, but I just want to scratch on our side where there's not been as much traffic. Uh, Gauri Main is never a great road to look for tracks. Um, so I just want to check carefully. Cedric also was down here and he got an update that they were still in Little Gauri and then we got an update that they weren't and so I don't actually know if they have crossed or not. They're not on the kill anymore, it's just Marips that's there on that kill um, apparently. Or a male is what I was told. So this must be these tracks that are going out. I drove here yesterday and these tracks weren't here. There's a male track but this looks big. Like almost Mulawati big. This is where he exited and went and stole that kill. Could very well be. Anyway, I'm just going to scratch around here just to see if there isn't any tracks for Shadulu. She has quite a specific route through Juma. Um, so if she has come across with a cub, I'm hoping that she's just going to walk her normal route. And she likes to walk on certain roads that are nice and soft. And the substrate is good. And so that should help us in order to find her. This is all just male tracks that we're seeing here. I'm sure Marips has been drinking here. He's been coming up this way to drink. The Cook Hill is not far from here um, inside Little Gauri. If you have a look here we've got a little mud wallow on this left hand side um, which is a kind of perfect place for a leopard to come drink. So I just want to go slowly. I actually even was thinking it yesterday. I was talking to him poor saying this is such a leopard spot this um, we know that Hosanna and Trangile used to love this area. So, uh, just want to double check and see. And maybe go just have a little walk around that pan to see if there's been any drinking activity from her and the cub. But in the meantime, though, from our little mission to go and find this cat, let's send you across to Rex and who's actually managed to find something. Great, we we have a, a big female head. Look like a matriarch. She, they, she come very close to us and nodding the head. In most cases, that shows the elephant itself. It's really appreciating the uh, company of the vehicle close by at the moment. It's such amazing, amazing, amazing to see that. I really. I wish to stay with this head of an elephant and learn this kind of a beautiful behavior with this female itself. Get to understand the vehicle and able to really cooperate. In most cases, this is to pass on to the generation to the nest. As you can see, she does have a youngster on the side. And how actually the youngster learn from the mother? They copy in most cases what the mother does. Even from feeding, what she's doing now, polishing all those sand to get out, it passed on to the youngster to, to know that 
you cannot eat anything without polishing all the dust or sand because it might be very dangerous for your life you can eat anything but make sure that there's no contaminated with uh, the sand because it might grind your mallows and able not to process food anymore in most cases animal when they die as far as an elephant they don't die by hunger they die just because the food is not able to be processed on the mollusk itself they die with a full belly stomach but if they cannot grind that in order to help the bacteria to break down inside if the grass go through as it is is nothing that it can it need to be damaged a little bit in order to sometimes go to the stomach and able to ferment and get digested by the bacteria easy on that way it's such amazing species you can tell this female hair she's telling history if you look at the, the trunk and look at the uh, task itself it tells that she's not uh, oh look at that wow amazing she pull pull the rocks and create a way for itself to go for a uh, silver raising the tree that uh, she's after it called silver raising and such amazing my first time ever seeing an elephant oh net yes indeed this is a really amazing 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 a animal of course if you look at uh, their behavior and oh wow, look at that amazing it could be something special there oh it's all about the roots nature is so much beautiful And I really love what this female doing here. There's no way in nature, in a reserve, the way you can share space with an elephant, doing everything close by and let the vehicle uh, to be a present. But especially with the breeding hand. Look at that uh, task information. It's been worn and cut in the front. That is all about cutting of all twigs using the same uh, line on the uh, task information itself and by so doing it cuts all the the task and make that dent look like this female uses the both task you can tell that by looking the task information or history of this female such amazing amazing animal I was just observing uh, the back of this elephant. It's also, you can tell that the mud that has been caked on top to create a layer that uh, they can move hours without uh, really get affected on the skin by the heat. Because animal, as far as an elephant, of course it's easy for them to go over, over heat and they has to go down to the water. By creating that layer, it tells that uh, the sun it's not going to be easy to penetrate through to the skin and then they overheat it and move back to the water. They need more hours of feeding themselves around in the area if they kick themselves in mud to keep this big body to sustain. Otherwise, without eating well, you will be really in danger. You all know that survival of the fittest out in the bush. If you're not fit, it's not going to happen. Those sounds just go straight through you.
Great looking. We look at this uh, giant here. Look like a young bull. It looks like it does have a very huge bulk body that uh, one day is gonna be. Alka, yes, this animal trust a vehicle because uh, all the guys that have with the protocols, we, we tend not to interfere and respect wildlife. But if we start to really try to interfere with this animal, not to respect, not to follow protocols that have been set for the nature park, these animals will start to be much more dangerous to us. As we see them, we don't really even try to scream and uh, threaten them, stand up and all that. We just remain seated and that is what makes this animal very calm to us because we don't uh, pose any threat in their life. That's the reason they're behaving like this. Uh, All right, so uh, in search of uh, these uh, lions. Now they're gonna get tracks, but I don't know from, some of them is from yesterday morning. The others was from uh, this morning. So, you know, it seems like these Telemati breakaways are doing circles in this area and they're a little bit difficult to really pinpoint the nicest ones around here. But it seems like these ones coming down is quite nice as well. See a bit more tracks coming down but unfortunately, look, so, uh, elephant tracks have squashed them as well. So, and the elephants were around. Yeah, the elephants came after the lions because the elephant tracks on top of the lion tracks. Well, I think I might just go do a little bit of a loop. Going to go up the, this road called Galago Shortcut. I'm going to go a bit further north, and then I might turn that way, west, and go do Aubrey's. Yeah, uh, bird tracks on top of it as well, so. West, Nadine, that way is west. <laughs> so, of course, Nadine, uh, in my ear, was saying that uh, <laughs> when I said that way, she said, yeah, that way is uh, going back to camp to get to uh, and pour some uh, breakfast. You know, if, uh, and Paul loves his breakfasts and dinners and lunch and snacks. So, yeah, I know, Paul's, he reminds me a lot of an elephant. He loves feed, he eats 85% of his 24-hour day. Anyway, well, we're going to continue looking for some food for Paul. Let's head over to Tristan to see what's happening on his safari. Well, hopefully Cedric will have some luck. I wonder if those lions haven't heard these buffalo and are starting to trail them. It's not actually that far from where these buffalo are. It's the same herd that Cedric had this morning. We were just looking for any signs of Shadu in the cub tracks and kind of just bumped into them at Trias Dam and it's quite a beautiful scene with all the buffalo spread out around the dam. Um, so we thought we'd just stop off with them for a little bit. But yeah, there's complete broken telephone this morning with tracks um, for Shadul and Cub. I eventually found the guys that are actually following the tracks and they're in Arethusa, deep, deep, deep into Arethusa. Um, so there's nowhere near Juma. Um, they're busy following them around a, a road called Chilolo, and Chilolo is kind of close to Samambili. Oh, there is a brand, brand, brand new little baby buffalo. I wonder if that wasn't born this morning. See the mom's busy grooming it. You see across the dam there, to the right of where you are. There you go. Mom is busy licking it. That thing is tiny, 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 tiny. I don't know if, know if it's standing yet. You see how it's being groomed? That's always an indication that they've just been born as they get all the afterbirth taken off of them. I want to see if she turns. You can sometimes see afterbirth hanging down. But that is a brand, brand spanking new little baby buffalo. How cute is that? 
That's very, very cute. I don't want to drive any closer than what we are now because I don't want it to spook. Um, unfortunately, that other buffalo has now walked in the way, which is classic with moving off. You'll see that there's a, a small buffalo just to the right of that one, which is a young one that's got actually got a seemingly damaged leg um, and is limping quite badly. But that gives you an idea of how small that other little buffalo is um, and how new it is. That was born this morning, I'm almost certain. I wonder if we're going to see it having its first steps. Oh, Mom is just giving it a good little lick and clean. Well done, girl. Now, sometimes when they give birth, it can be super fast. It doesn't always take long if it's an experienced female. She can give birth within 10 15 minutes. Um, and we'll be able to just kind of pop it out quickly and so it's sometimes a much faster process than people realize with these guys. But let's see, if she starts to move then obviously the little calf will get up and go too. That is tiny, tiny though. So cute. Obviously you can see there's a couple other buffalo in the way. Stacy, indeed, it is a great way to start the day when you've got a little baby buffalo that's brand new and just been born. Um, they, uh, obviously, any baby animal is cute, but when you can see an animal on its first day of its life, it's always very, very special. So there's a perfect way to start the day. And like I say, while it's not great that we didn't have any tracks for Shadulia and Cub and they're not this side, it's a pretty, pretty epic little, uh, little um, present for us at this stage. So always, always, always good when you get a little baby buffalo um, present. Shame that thing is small, 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 small. It's crazy because there's so many other little buffalo around and you can just see the size difference between them. Like there's one at the edge of the water there and you can see that that's just got its little horns. Um, and if you win that other buffalo moves and the one at the back, you'll notice that it is very little in comparison. Cute though, it's always nice seeing buffalo herds with lots of little babies. Let's try to see also if there's any yellow-billed ox peckers. There's so many these days. Uh, there they are. I can see. So Ray, always super sweet to see a little buffalo. Um, so I'm glad that you agree. Um, I was saying there's normally lots of yellow-billed ox peckers these days and I can already see one, two, three, four, so lots and lots of yellow builds, particularly on this group here to the left. Um, these days, yellow builds are, are, are becoming fairly common um, on buffalo herds. We're even starting to see them on animals like kudu um, and, and rhino and those kind of things. And when I first started in the Sabi Sands, we were lucky if we saw one yellow build ox picker in a year. Nowadays, like I say, if you have a buffalo herd, there's a yellow build ox picker generally on them somewhere so it's just testament to the fact that their numbers are starting to come back quite nicely which is really really good um, I'm glad that we're starting to, to see them that's so cool that, that little one kind of want the herd to move a little bit and then to see if this little one starts to stand and maybe we can get its first little steps but we'll just hang out and be patient it's going to take a while for the rest of the buffalo to move off to drag that one to get up Do you love relaxing at a waterhole with the sights and sounds of Africa all around you? Well, we have some really exciting news for you. From August 1st, AfriCam is joining forces with Wild Earth to bring the majesty of Africa right into your living room with nine incredible new waterhole cameras from across South Africa and Kenya. 
Get ready to embark on a new journey. This is Live at the Waterhole. These elephants. Yo, oh, when these smokes. A lot of smoky, smoky, yeah. It was windy. Okay. Hi, Elise. Like a few of them, yeah. They're all very docile at the moment. Nice little herd. Sorry, I'm just getting a bit hot here. It's a nice female. Very straight tusks, huh? she's got stunning, stunning tusks. All feeding on some of the combretums around here, some of them feeding on the terminalias. They're very docile, yeah. Not much movement from them. Maybe a bit of a rest. Sometimes they can sleep for short intervals and usually they'll find a shady spot and they'll all kind of congregate together and have like 20-30 minute interval, sleep intervals. Well, we're still with our buffalo. Our little baby stood up. I can't see it now, though. It's in the mass of buffalo. There it is. It's, you can just make it out walking. Um, it's not easy to see, though. It's going to go behind a big thicket area, and then hopefully it will come out. I can just see its tiny little legs in amongst everybody. Um, it is very, very, very small. Um, not too wobbly, though. It kind of got up and started to move around pretty, pretty quickly. Um, there's the one that's sort of scratching itself and moving around it's there in amongst that lot uh, of buffalo and you can hear there's lots of squeaks and squawks going from that end um, there's also a report of a male lion crossing not far from us now kind of coming in this direction so I'm gonna maybe just stand by and see he might pop out behind these buffalo always when you have big buffalo herds it's worth just stopping for a while and just looking um you get these lines that often trail the buffalo and kind of come in the direction that you are so well worth just being patient with them and it's like i say it's such a beautiful scene with all of the buff 
around the dam. Lots of them have already departed and are heading towards twin dams now. Um, it's quite common to see that with our buffalo here is they basically just do dam hopping. So they go gari, feed, trias feed, twin dams feed, chitra dam, torture dam, bufuzuk dam and kind of just rotate through those dams as they go. Buffalo are super water dependent so very 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 typical to find them and you can hear they make a lot of noise so not only is there the ox peckers that are making a lot of noise but they grunting and groaning all the time um, as well as then obviously they leave a huge trail of poo and lots and lots and lots of tracks and so easy for lions to follow that's why typically if you get big herds of buffalo somewhere there'll be a lion behind all of them can't see that little one anymore there it is it's coming out over there there it goes Annette, you say be strong little buffalo? Indeed. You can see the umbilical cord still attached there, which is to be expected given it's brand spanking new. Um, but it is tiny, tiny, tiny. You see it's trying to its mom? Isn't that cute? That is very, very, very cute. So you'll see it's going to try and get in underneath mom and try and kind of keep up. It's not doing badly in terms of walking but it's, it's not going to be that stable if it has to start running. You'll see it start getting a little bit wobbly um, as it does. There's mom just turning around. That is very, very cute. And little buck teeth. It give you an idea of how small it is. There's a blacksmith lapwing that landed in front so that can kind of tell you about how big it is oh that is cute i think it's going to come up over the damn wall so we'll just stay where we are because we'll get a nice sort of eye level view of how big it actually is mom's gonna have a drink You can see the herds on the move now. It's amazing how all of a sudden some start to move and then everybody gathers pace. Unfortunately, getting photobombed by the one in the foreground here. Um, <laughs> this decided to stop and stay exactly in the shot. Trisha, no, the oxpeckers will bounce. Um, off of the herd and join other herds and go on to other animals um, you know they, they'll kind of follow the herd most of the day and then at night they go and roost and ox peckers often will go and roost in trees and they'll kind of go in underneath the bark it's actually very very cool to see but when they then the sun rises again the buffalo herds moved off and there's impalas right there they're gonna go and land on the impalas um, and feed off them so they'll just kind of go to the nearest um, animal that they can feed off when they wake up in the mornings. Um, so they won't always be part of the same herd and travel with the herd all the time. I mean, they'll obviously try and kind of stay with them for as long as possible because there's a lot of food for them, but they won't necessarily just stay on that herd and that herd only for the duration of their life. Let's see where it goes. That little one, I'm sure, is going to get pushed into the middle of this grouping as they come over the dam wall. I don't think they'll let it just hang out on the fringes, but neat, decent sized herd of buffalo, that's for sure. There's uh, lots and lots of them, and it's so nice to see these herds again. Um, you know, it was a long time we really struggled with herds of buffalo uh, and being able to, to kind of see them. It's crazy to think when you look at all of these as kind of Rian's been panning around that this is only half the herd. KD pretty much is straight away. So that little one now you won't notice it because it's just been born but within a couple of days you'll start to see these little nubbins. So these kind of little bald spots and then the horns start to grow. So pretty much day one um, it starts. Uh, their horns and they go very very straight at first so you start to see these little straight horns and then Within, you know, a couple of years, they start to then bow and get that sort of rounded um, look that you get. Let's see. I think she's coming up the bank. 
She was there with that group. And there it is. Cute. So, so cute. Just, yeah, it kind of gets pushed into the middle of the group. They won't leave it on the fringes. It's still too vulnerable at that age to be left to walk towards us. And so it gets kind of caught up with all the rest in amongst that group. Let's see it try go down the hill. It's going to be a bit of a test. Oh, we're doing all right. Not as fast as the others. Mom's coming back to get it because it went the wrong way. Uh, it won't fall and roll down. And even if it does, they're actually stronger than they look. Um, it'll be able to to be all right. And it's got lots of soft fur, so it'll kind of just flop down. I would imagine. There it goes. Look, it made it no problem, unless it gets steamrolled by one of the others. But seemingly done okay. Cute man. Careful little one though, there's a lion lurking somewhere in this area, so just be aware of it. Getting nudged along. Shame, legs look too long for its body when they're that size. All right, we're probably going to leave our buffalo now. They're starting to move off from the water hole. We'll just do a loop around the back here, see if we can't help Cedric pick up this lion, and we'll see. Maybe we get some luck. Hi, my name is Claire. Wilders has been part of this home for many years as it connects us to the bush and the culture that we love and miss so much. I became an explorer so that other people around the world can get to experience the African bush in this unique way as well. I am beyond excited that I was drawn to win the prize at Amakala Game Reserve for three nights. It is truly a dream come true. Sign up today and you could be the one experiencing it for yourself. You can hear it time and again breaking off uh, uh, branches, pushing off trees, 
it's, it's amazing. Maybe let me uh, position ourselves, then you can see what's taking place here with this elephant. We're just behind this tree. It's such interesting to see. I'll take an example uh, with this particular female right here. She, she's such amazing. She pushes the tree and just pave the, the rocks, pull the rocks off away from the root system and eat a little bit and left and let the youngster continue doing feeding on the root system because it's very nutritious and she keep on going to the next tree and doing the same. And that is amazing to see that if it comes to uh, 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 parental care, you tend to see a female also doing what the lions and leopard doing. Kill an animal, bring the youngster on the kill, feed and the mother during the mother's watch, which also the elephant, they're doing similar thing because they push the tree, let the youngster in and move to the next tree and do the same, which is, is very good. It's how actually you can take care of the baby and being so happy and healthy out here. Because if you're not healthy out in the bush like this, you'll be get challenged quite a lot with the other species that might hunt you. You're not only them, even amongst the structure of a head, you'll be always competed because if you're weak, you'll be all the time pushed out in anything that you might start to really interested or feeding. If you don't know what if the water becoming shorter, if you're not weak, if you're not strong, the stronger females and the young males will be able to push you and take over from you. So it's all the time competition. It just reminds me while I was young, me, I mean, living in a bigger picture of a family where we have an extended family in our culture, where we tend to see 15, 20 kids, they were feeding on one pot. It's always competition that I need to uh, take as much as can before all the food finish. Exactly the same here with the structure of an elephant. If you're not strong enough, you'll be pushed and you'll be continuously moving, feeding 24 hours. There's some of the individual members here, I believe there will be time where if they're full and find themselves very satisfied, they can even uh, lie down because they feel like they are more comfortable. They can nap, they can have a time to nap. Although it's very difficult to find the elephant lying down. But the time you know that elephant do lie down, they will be healthy and satisfied on whatever it's been collecting over a day. Most of the time you find the elephant early part of the morning, they do lie down. Or during the course of a day, if it's tired, it's been active, it depends what is your activities in the course of the whole day and night. Sometimes you might have a time to lie down in the course of a day. And it's according to the... Um, your activities, whether you have collected enough food or not. If not, you have to feed it 24 hours because the big body, the, of course, of an elephant, it needs to be fed well. If not, it will start to show off and it will be uh, not great for individuals to do so because you might hunt it by pride of lions or clan of hyena and you can be killed all the time if you're not well healthy. I love this species, I love elephant, and it's really amazing. And uh, we predicted very well from the beginning. This elephant will spend more time here because it's the highest ground where energy or, or they really enjoy energy from the sun. Of course, while we see this elephant, let me take you to Chris and uh, Tristan, who will give us a little bit of update what he's up to. On the area looking for, I mean, lions or leopards around in Juma. Well, we managed to find our male lion. It didn't take too long. Um, he's in the block behind these buffalo. I just decided instead of the road kind of after I heard where you crossed uh, there's a two track that runs from Treehouse Dam straight to Shibamu Road and there's lots of termite mounds there and when lions are trailing buffalo the best place to look is on a termite mound I don't know why it is but they love to get up onto mounds to watch the herd so I was saying to Rian just check the mounds as we go through this block I'm sure we're gonna find him here somewhere and sure enough there he was sitting on top of a mound he's probably about 
200 meters behind the herd at the moment. Um, just watching towards the dam and checking out those buffalo. I'm sure eventually he'll kind of come down and start heading towards the dam itself as the buffalo drift. It is starting to obviously get warm now and, and, and hotter and, and that's obviously going to mean that it's difficult for a lion to keep going. Um, but depending on how hungry he is and depending on um, whether this breeze stays up because there's this cool breeze blowing, it might dictate him actually carrying on um, and trailing the buffalo throughout the day. As to which male lion it is, I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, kind of need to go through a few of the ID kits. It's, there's so many of these young boys that are around at the moment between these guys and, I mean, the Kinkumas, the Talamatis, the um, Kambulas. There's lots of young boys that have been on the prowl. And so, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna think maybe that it's one of the Inkahuma boys, but let's see whether it is or not. He's got quite distinctive scars all over him, um, particularly on his right side of his muzzle. There's a, a scar through his whisker line, um, and then there's a little nick on his left nostril, so that should hopefully make it much easier. Um, like I say, a number of young boys moving around these days, so it's doable to always pinpoint who's exactly who, especially when they're on their own. It's much easier when they're in coalitions and together it makes our life a lot, lot easier when you see them in their, their right respective groups. Either way though, a beautiful sighting of a beautiful young male. Um, you can see his mane is still developing, um, hasn't grown completely, um, but sitting on this termite mound with that blue sky and kind of just watching over the African bushes pretty spectacular sight. Okay, so apparently it's a Talamati boy, which is epic. Um, I haven't seen these guys in a long, 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 long time. Um, so that's really cool to see. I wonder if both boys are here or if it's just the one. Um, maybe the other one is lying behind the mound somewhere. Um, I'm not sure. Um, it's very, very cool though that we have one of them. Like I said, it's been ages since I've seen them. They uh, tend to evade me whenever I'm in this part of the world. And so nice to actually catch up with one of them. Explains why it's trailing buffalo between the Talamatis and the Nkumas, uh, always somewhere behind a buffalo. It's, uh, it's a pretty sort of common theme with those two prides is they love themselves um, some buffalo. And so typically, like I say, when we get big herds of buffalo on Juma, there's somewhere behind that herd will be a trailing set of lions. Judy is a good-looking boy, isn't he? Um, hopefully he's not going to be a, a naughty good-looking boy and grab our little baby buffalo. That would be a tragedy. I think it would be very, very difficult for him, though, um, given the size of that herd and the number of big males, and if it is just him on his own, um, then uh, it would not go down well, and he would be in the naughty books, that's for sure. But hopefully he doesn't. I think it's, this is more wishful thinking than anything else. And during the day, I find the lions don't really push the buffalo too hard. They, they'll kind of try if the, the, there's a big pride and they're all hungry. But if it's just lone individuals, they just end up trailing the buffalo all day and then into the night. And they try and use the cover of darkness to kind of grab one of those smaller buffalo and then move off before the herd chases them. Um, in a male of this size, if he had to grab that buffalo, he could grab it and just run and he'd be able to carry it with him. Um, so that's kind of what they try and target, but they know that they need the cover of darkness to be able to get in close to do that. The other thing that's not going to work in his favor today is this wind is swirling quite a bit, so his scent will blow onto those buffalo pretty quickly. And once that happens, he's unfortunately going to be smelt and then those males will start to get kind of around those young ones and just sort of try and keep him at bay. 
As you can see, he's panting hard. He's obviously walked a long way and it's been hot. Um, it's be interesting to know how far he heard these buffalo from because the guys said he came out of Shirley's, which is south of Arethusa, and then cut through um, Hoffman's and then into to Juma itself. Um, and like I said, they only, we only got a report of one line. I don't know if there's more, um, but just the report so far is just for one. Uh, sometimes what happens when they're trailing buffalo is like they can be a, bit, a little bit split and they can be one ahead of the other one and they can kind of cross through without you, you realizing. Um, but at this stage, like I said, it's just the one. I think if there was two, you'd find the other one would be on the mound with them. It wouldn't be sitting behind, especially if they're facing buffalo or they're hearing or smelling buffalo. They like to be in a place where they can see and kind of pick up if there's any sign of them. Beautiful boy, though. Must admit the Talamatis did produce some very, very, very good-looking young fellas. Shreya, you say it looks like the older of the two? Well, that's good to know. I'm glad. I believe they've got names now. Um, I don't know, yeah, you know, who gave them those names, but if it was us at Wild Earth, I believe they've got names. I have no idea what they are, but... Um, as a lot of you know, I, lion world is not my forte. While I enjoy tracking lions, I typically don't spend a huge amount of time with them. Um, so, haven't really kept up to date too much with the naming of them. Um, and apparently it wasn't through Wild Earth, so that would also explain why I don't really know what the names are. It'd be interesting to know actually who gave them names. But you'll see as he stops hearing the buffalo or being able to see them, you might see him start to yawn and then up he'll get and wonder. I wouldn't be surprised if he comes towards the dam and has a little drink um, just now. After panting like this, a lot of moisture will have been lost. Anyway, let's sit with him. Let's see what he gets up to. Hopefully, he'll take us on a little bit of an adventure at some point. Are you passionate about photography and the wild wonders of Africa? Introducing AfriCam's incredible virtual wildlife photo competition, where you don't need a fancy camera or to travel across the continent to capture breathtaking shots. All you need is your love for wildlife and our live waterhole cameras. Simply tune in and snap your favorite moments as they unfold in real time. Start clicking and share the magic of Africa with the world.
say, yes. And uh, well, Paul's got an interesting diet. That's one thing I can say. So, usually the big plate of food, eggs, bacon, sausages, toast, not one slice, two slices, granola, yogurt, muesli, MSG. Yeah. Life, <laughs> living the dream <laughs> when he's in front of that plate uh, or the plate in front of him. Living the dream, eating the dream. <laughs> and of course, yes, indeed, Nadine, and he has to have his Barbie juice next to him. Indeed. He loves Barbie. And he's got a pink cup as well. Well, I think I'm also looking forward to breakfast and a nice cup of coffee. Strong cup of coffee this morning. I need that. Well, our male's doing exactly what we thought he would do. His buffalo have drifted off. I can't hear them anymore, and so he's come off of his mound and is now slowly moving his way towards the dam. I'm pretty sure he's going to go for a drink. He's just on my right-hand side, so I'm just going to wait for him to come out onto this game path. So this is that old sort of two-track that I was telling you about. It kind of runs through here. Um, this was a, a two-track that was created f mostly because of Tingana, Hukumuri, and Hosanna, and then the Inkuhuma Pride too used to use this a lot and so um, kind of that was where it started. It's grown over a lot obviously with all the rain but you can see he's quite full as well so the need to hunt these buffalo is not really there. He's got quite a big belly um, so I suspect that once he's had a drink he might find a shady spot and lie down but let's try and just follow him down to the water. Once he gets down through here there's, it opens out a bit and then I'm going to go around so that we get the light on our side for when he's drinking. Um, We'll try and kind of get in front of him from there and get him coming towards the water hole itself. But you'll just follow this little game path all the way down. You can see the water in front already, so he'll, I'm sure, have a drink now. Now, Christian, maybe I haven't seen any sign of another lion, and he's not looking behind him and contact calling. Um, you know, we let him walk quite far before we actually started up and moved and we had to turn and kind of do our own little maneuvering. And so I don't think there's another one with him, but maybe they were on a carcass and the other one was just finishing up that carcass and will still come later in the day. Um, they're pretty good at finding one another, these guys. They get onto each other's scent profile and they just sort of nose down and follow each other through there. But quite cool to see him kind of walking towards the dam. I'm going to go around him now. There's a little track that goes up here on the left. Um, well, there used to be. I don't know if it's been pushed over by an Ellie now. No, there, it's still there. I'm just going to go around and we'll catch him at the dam itself. the camouflage and decoration. Interested to see which way he drinks. I think he's going to drink here on this edge. It's normally where the cats drink from. But leopards and lions are two different to drink and the lions like to drink is not necessarily the same. But I'm pretty sure he's going to end up just going sorry yeah, straight there towards the dam but isn't that cool and we got into the right position just had a little obviously heard something behind him uh, impalas are shouting at him now that's why he's making the stop and is just having a little look around and you're gonna 
I see him having a good drink. Nice reflection as well. You'll be able to see from this angle just how they drink. So you see how they don't scoop water up with their tongue curling forward. The tongue curls back and then the friction of that hairy tongue um, is able to bring water up and they then just close their mouth um, around that water. The Impala will eventually keep quiet. Um, they will see that he's not a threat and they'll stop shouting at some point. Um, obviously the buffalo will have moved on but they'll have heard this and they'll know then that something is trailing them so they'll also be hyper aware at some point that there's something behind. It's pretty cool though, if you ask me. I think we managed to get into a good position for him to come and drink. always enjoy when he gets kind of cats drinking. It would be nice if he put his bum down. I always prefer it when their bottoms are are down. I think it uh, often makes for a better sort of frame, but seemingly not the case for him today. Anyway, we're going to sit with him while he drinks and then I'm sure he's going to go find a little spot to lie down. <laughs> 